this. And I, we talked a little bit about before, like, so I feel like I've not, like, again, not that I've obtained it, but I think I'm better at being with others in their anxiety and like sitting with them in that and, um, without trying to solve it. Um, and so like we talk, kind of talked about before, like I think I'm better about not offering, try, not trying to say the perfect thing, but just being like, I'm here, um, you know, um, but not thinking that I or putting that pressure on myself to say the perfect thing um, for that person or trying to give advice when, you know, it's not my full experience. Um, I was also thinking about how how there are people that I've connected with, um, like um, through the infertility journey, and she did end up like they had a failed adoption. She did get pregnant at forty two, so they were like, "This is our, you know, one um, and done kind of thing," because um, they basically given up anyway. Like our friendship started because we connected at like a lunch about our infertility and she's a really close friend now. And, um, and then I even think about people that I know that even, even if we decide not to go, um, which obviously like our future plans are on hold because of the crisis, if we want to pursue fertility specialists or adoption, but even just the knowledge of like going through the adoption process and even even though we went international some people go domestic but like my sisters going through foster they're different but I've learned a lot and so I feel like I'm also able to better support people going through that um, and even though like my adoption experience is different than my sisters I like we're very different people <laughs> um, as as most siblings are um, <laughs> I know you can relate to that I'm, I'm sure but um, like I it's that's brought our relationship closer like it has and not that you always have to go through horrible things to get closer but it kind of goes to like it can stunt you or it can spur you to grow um you know kind of that idea as well well which is tied to the, hel the helicopter the caterpillar can't use my words today um so it's kind of thinking like okay well i've been able to be supportive or at least more understand um like people going through that process or have gone through that process and um like you know I'm not gonna insensitively say to somebody oh how much did you pay for your child because I know like that's not how they people say things like that literally in the adoption books they have you read like people are going to say these things this is how you handle it and <laughs> how you respond and people just don't know what to say um but so I kind of uh, was looking at it that way of like how how has that made me, me different? Um, or how have I tried to take this for growth? And that doesn't mean I don't ha didn't have times of wallowing. And that doesn't mean I still don't have times where I'm just like, this sucks. <laughs> or this has sucked, or I hated that. Um, but I think for me, that was what I was kind of where, and I don't, I was trying to pepper that back in. And I can do a better job of that too, um, going back over that again. Um. Can I make an observation? Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the things I tried to write down. I tried to make a list of the things you were saying. Um, because I I think it's interesting and helpful. Um, are external to you, like you're. So I think that's helpful, right? To think about. I think in in like Keegan, six nineteen language, you're thinking about yourself and other and you're holding the other as object right now but what if you hold yourself as object how has what have you gained from your experiences does that make sense mm -hmm. i guess i struggle with that question a little bit because i feel like i've grown internally because i'm able to like i'm able to see outside myself a little bit um I will say I and I don't know if how much of this is just related to this process in particular <laughs> or if it's just like the age I am now I'm like getting older I don't know um but I'm less bothered by other things than I used to be um and and so that's where I think it maybe is <laughs> this process of um 
like I like to be a perfectionist and I don't like to be like I am a perfectionist and I I like to have control and I've I've gotten better of letting go and I've put um not that I'm perfect at it but I'm improving on letting go of this perceived control um and this pressure on myself to do everything perfectly um like not that I don't want to be further ahead of things like you know, there's a lot of wins this week on, I feel like, of things I've done well, and then I am frustrated because I want to be further along, and I would, like, in the past have these periods, and I don't know if this is related, so if I'm going up too much off of a tangent, just let me stop. Um, like, I, I would just beat myself up about it and just, like, you're stupid, why can't you get this right, you screw everything up, and I've had a lot, <laughs> a lot less of that. Um, and I think part of it too is like going through the miscarriage, like they they told me in the hospital and my doctor told me later when I went in to check up to make sure I didn't need a follow-up procedure because they go and do another ultrasound to make sure like everything's flushing itself out basically. Um, is that um, like I, there was nothing I did to cause that. So like I literally had no control over that. And then the, the adoption falling through, like it was literally out of no fault of our own. <laughs> Like it wasn't something we did, and um, and so it was just like okay, like I even though I know like cognitively maybe knew that a lot of times things just it wasn't always my fault. You know, I, I guess I'm better at giving myself grace than I used to be, mm -hmm. and um, like this morning, <laughs> this is probably a stupid example. Spilt my like entire cup of coffee on the rug. Like somehow put my whole hand in my coffee. Like forgot it was right there. Put my whole hand in my coffee that in a way that like knocked the, <laughs> the cup over. And I was like annoyed. So I'm like, and the dog was right there. So I'm like, Maddie, move, because I just didn't want her to smell like stale coffee. And um, and so I was like, I was like, oh. And then I kind of just stopped. Like I was cleaning it up, but even before I would just have gone through this self-talk of like, you're an idiot. Why did you do that? Like, da, 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 da. and I was just like, yeah, okay. Like, hopefully it comes out of the rug. If it doesn't, that's fine. And um, I don't know if that's great personal growth because people will probably be like, that's not that big of a deal, but for me it is. <laughs> but you know what they say, the devil's in the details. And so I think that's a perfect example of when the negative self-talk would really, like, cause it's not, the negative self-talk is not, um, you know, sure it impacts us when we're about to go like in the movies, speak in a, at a big forum or whatever, speak in front of, you know, let's be honest, like the girl's crush or whatever, if it's a chick flick, but like, you know, it instead when it really impacts is on the daily, like that's, that's a one-time one-off kind of thing. And sure it doesn't help at that moment, but that's not what's building up the rest of the voices in our head, right? So, well, the voice. <laughs> I mean, I have multiple, I think, but in, <laughs> depending on the mood and time of day. Um, but I think it's the little things that, like, when we're with ourselves for those moments of spilling everything or tripping or whatever other dumb little things that we do on a daily basis, that is what is um, giving those, those negative yeah. selves um, control over us or power over us. And so I think that not getting upset and not in noticing that you had less self negative self-talk about spilling the coffee i think is two things is one um less self-talk is great you know being being like you're talking about like you're better giving yourself grace but then two i i really think that a lot of a lot of change and a lot of evolution in keegan's terms comes when we start to notice those things right like that there's real power in noticing the the little things like that so i don't think it's a stupid example at all i think it is perfect which yeah. makes sense for our perfectionist <laughs> and that it's it's funny because i do it is easier for me to externalize things and 